Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first talk in the series of Guide to Clans. Um, in this talk, I'll try to guide you how to create clan games or clan systems in your games. Um, and let's start with a bit of an understanding of what a clan is, although I, I'm sure all of you know. So I went to check with Wikipedia, and Wikipedia says that the clan is a group of people united by actual or perceived kinship and ancestry. And if you're not a native speaker like I am, well, I'm not. So I went on and tried to realize what kinship is. And it is a web of social relationship that forms an important part of the lives of uh, most humans. Or in other words, a clan is a group of people um, united by a web of social relationships, which, is, which are important to them. And I think it makes kind of sense. Let's look at the state of, mobile, of clan games out of the mobile games industry today. So this is interesting. Over the last five years, clans have grown significantly in their proportion of top-grossing games revenues. Today, they generate more than 60% of these revenues. And the reason is, well, twofold. First of all, casual players learning that they actually love to play and going on to more complex games. And then um, you have de game developers adding clan games and clan systems to new and interesting genres, ones that were... Uh, did not have clans before. You have them in solitaire games, you have them in racing games. We'll see a lot of interesting games today that have a clan system. Um, now, you all know Clash of Clans, obviously. Um, I think they coined the term clans for mobile guilds. Right Before that, guilds were more common. Um, World of Warcraft is very famous for its guild system that uh, um, rallied players into raiding together and people were using Ventrilo and other communication uh, apps back then, voice mostly to uh, stay connected. Uh, the first game to introduce a clan system was a text-based RPG back in 1989. So Avalon was a game you played with, you know, you texted what you wanted to do in the game and it would respond, tell you what happened. This was massively successful, by the way, um, and a very complex economy of which, very interesting. Um, so. I'll spend one slide telling you what my company does, and, and then the rest of this will be an applicable guide. Clanplay is a messaging app for gamers that mirrors the chat inside games, maybe your games. When you have a clan system in your game, you notice that a lot of your players go to third-party messaging apps to stay connected. They go to Line, to WhatsApp, to Facebook. For them, it's a bit cumbersome. Imagine onboarding 50 people onto your clan, onto your WhatsApp account, right? And as game developers, you get no value from having your players on WhatsApp. Because when they churn, WhatsApp will not give you tools to bring them back. And that's exactly what Clanplay is trying to do. And so it's a, it's a very equipped app, tailored for gamers. You can see that they can strategize and they can share timers. And every um, image is a discussion, right? And you can comment and react to it. Um, but we also let developers message their players on Clanplay even while they're not playing. Right. Um, so before launching Clanplay, I was the VP of Business Development at Plarium. Plarium is a um, fairly large uh, strategy game developer, more than 1,000 employees. And I've seen hundreds of millions of players join their um, strategy games along the years. And this is a behavior that kind of repeated itself. Uh, I was very engaged with the product, so I launched several internal studios. I closed multiple IP deals and publishing deals. Uh, and to do so, you can imagine that you, know, you kind of need to understand how the product ties into that movie or that TV show or celebrity. Um, I come from a financial back, uh, trading uh, background. I was working as a crude oil trader, uh, which has not much to do with games, but um, you know, it is a fun game on its own. So why would you want to add clans to your game? Multiple reasons. First of all, if your game right now is a single-player game, it means that you have only a certain type of interaction to keep your players engaged. When you add clans, it's not on only your game mechanics that draw your players to you know, retain and continue to engage, it's also their friends in the games. Usually, by the way, friends who are not connected in the real world, right? Get friends specific for this game. And when they do create these social relationships, um, they also find another reason to spend. You're not only spending on your progression, you're also spending on keeping your clan competitive and staying up there in the leaderboards. You can see that um, Britney Spears is a new Kardashian game. Um, 
has a clan system, racing rivals, uh, huge, right outside here is the first social casino game with a clan system. The top one on the right, uh, the bottom one on the right is Solitaire. That's, the name of the game is single, right? But it has a clan system. Um, and the five pillars of, of clanship, these are the five key things you need to create a clan in your game. You gotta start with communications. You gotta let players communicate among themselves. If you want them to work together to collaborate, they need to be able to coordinate. Um, and then, collaboration is very important. So, the more reasons they have to interact among themselves, and in some games to work together, the stronger they will connect to one another. This is from SimCity Build It, where you can trade. This is a very fun element in the game. I personally spent hours trading in this game, maybe because I like trading. Um, but uh, it gets you really engaged uh, with other players, right? And um, this is from Shop Heroes. We'll view all of these games in more depth a bit later. Um, Shop Heroes is a nice RPG game, and when you join a city raid, you can win unique rewards, like this um, uh, imprint uh, right here, blueprint for uh, creating this uh, weapon, which you cannot obtain otherwise. So it gives you a strong reason to participate in the clan events. Um, and benefits of being part of a clan. So if you're part of a crew in Kendall and, and Kylie right here, um, you can send and receive gifts of soft currency. So it's another revenue stream just for being part of a crew. And lastly, you need goals and competition. Competition is a very strong driver of engagement. Just displaying a competition is a good start, like the leaderboards at the Clash of Clans. Now, let's look at uh, examples from some uh, simulation games that have a clan system in them. Shop Heroes, I mentioned it earlier. In this game, you operate a shop, and you craft various weapons, and you sell them to other to customers that come into your shop, and you also use these items to equip your heroes and send them on reported battle missions. Um, there is a chat, you can see that there is a public chat, a city chat, with it, which is your clan. And the interesting part about their trading system is that they also allow trading hard currency. This is, now this is a crazy thought, right? You can actually earn currency that costs you money. Um, and they, they didn't limit the... Uh, well, they did place some uh, cap on their... <laughs> Uh, pricing of items, but it's very wide, so to speak. So I, I can tell you that I was spending so much time buying low, selling high, buying low, selling high in the game. Um, lots of fun. And um, you can see something here, which comes up in many games that incorporate a clan system. Onboarding. Onboarding is hard. I'll touch upon that a bit later and go into specifics of best practices, but there are so many parameters for choosing a city in this game levels of upgrades for the buildings, and, and level of participation of players, and so on. Uh, and they display so little of them when you go to select a city. So you got to actually click the city, go into it, review it, go back to the selection screen, search from the beginning again. Very cumbersome. Uh, nice PvP action where you send your heroes off to attack, and when you win these battles, you get crowns, which can be used to upgrade your city uh, special buildings um, when you're the mayor. So it's a nice tie-in of the PvP loop back to the clan system. And leaderboards would show various um, matrix, uh, how you compare to your uh, friends from the city, how you compare to the general population in the game. At some point I was number 205, I think. My, hi my highest rank ever in a game. Um, and let's look at this one. So Kendall and Kylie. That's by Glue. Uh, I think it's very interesting because this is basically an energy energy type clicker. You uh, you click through uh, to progress the storyline, and they were able to uh, properly engage with the clan system in this game. Um, and so the game gives you fairly on uh, fairly early on um, a, a mission, a task to join a clan, and they are very good at uh, notifying you where you were successful doing so. Um, but then again, when you try to complete to do the actual action, you can see that they were looking to solve the problem of onboarding by offering to join a random clan, right? And in my mind, this is a bit of a mistake because it kind of, de of diminishes the value of a clan. If I can join any clan, it means that the selection is less important, 
right? So I, I'm not sure how I feel about this feature, but it is a challenge that a lot of games are trying to find different ways to comp to uh, compare to solve. Um, and then it tells you that you can um, share creds, soft currency with your clan members. Um, this again is done by via a task. They have a small bug around um, clicking uh, other characters in the game. Really? 10 minutes remaining? Wow. Okay, so I'll speed through. Um, but you can also engage with uh, taking selfies and your clanmates can help you with uh, your ongoing missions. Um, let's go on. So SimCity Build It, one of my favorite. Um, so in this game you have a lot of social interaction, you uh, add your friends and then you can go and visit their cities and when you do you can buy special items from them. The game also gives you a gift occasionally for um, strolling around their cities and taking a good look at how they structured it. Um, trading is a big thing in this game, uh, there's been a lot of revision as I was playing it for the last year, uh, trying to optimize the system and the place where it is today is you know, much better and, and uh, the experience is much smoother. And when you go forward, they've introduced this contest of mayors where you participate in a competition against other players uh, and win unique rewards and take part you know, in, in time-based events. I love time-based events. It creates great stress and tension for players. Um, and then you, you win unique rewards. These rewards are hard to obtain without participating in this um, ongoing event system. When I was doing this presentation, they did not have a clan system. And luckily enough, I met with uh, Petri, the creative director behind the game, um, and he told me they have a clan system. So last night I went quickly to the game and, uh, and, and found the new, relatively new clan system was introduced last month, um, a club for mayors. Um, and notice how even here, when you're being offered a few clubs to, cho to choose from, there's a big gap or a big diversity in the clan levels, right? Some of them are very advanced, some are less. You need to apply to some of them, some you can join. These are called open clans, right? Um, and what they did here, which is nice, is that first of all, you, you can now chat with people, uh, only your clan members, by the way, and you can discuss um, trading. So someone will say they need an item, you will bring it up for trading, but not promote it in the market so it won't be visible to other players. Uh, and so your clan members can go visit you and buy this specific item. Um, right. Uh, moving on to the challenge of onboarding. So I was touching upon that multiple times and I've, we've seen it in Plarium as well. Think about it. Your game will have so many clans and this is a tiny screen. We're talking about the smartphone here, right? You can't really implement search and sort and filter functions properly in such a small screen. Um, and so the way to solve it, and these are personal opinionated uh, best practices, um, is force all of your early clans into being open. There is no reason for a level one clan of a level two player uh, to require an approval to join, right? In the beginning, players churn and they go and, and join and leave the clan, and it should be very frictionless. And the, as the clans evolve, and this gamifies it a little bit, you add uh, the ability to require application and then eventually close the clan completely and require an invitation to join. So there are usually three um, phases, open, um, apply application, and closed, right? Um, and then control the size. So your early clans should not be big. They could be 10 or 15 people. And as they progress and the clan level evolves, you can build them up towards 100 if, the, if it's suitable for your game uh, and allow multiple levels of um, permission. So leader, co-leaders, all of them should be able to kick other players um, to streamline you know, the active behavior. One thing to avoid is ghost clans. Ghost clans is when the clan is not active, so only the leader is doing stuff. Uh, and the way to do it is try to um, uh, recognize and identify active players. You can have a couple of benchmarks. Uh, the easiest one is obviously spend. Someone who spends in your game is likely to be active and engage with it for long. The second one is daily sessions. So a player that has higher daily session rate usually will stay longer in the game. Um, let's go on. So this is, uh, I hope we have enough time. When we were setting up plan play, we were serving players from 21 countries engaging in, in strategy and card collection games. And we came up with interesting, very interesting feedback that I wanted to share here. Um, so first of all, how many games they play? They play, play an average of 1.8 games in parallel. Um, 
they chat a lot with their friends, right? This is very social, and look at what they're chatting about. Not even the game content, so the most uh, common topic for them would be joking around, right? And um, who do they prefer in the, in the clan? They don't care much, and if they do care, it's usually someone of their same level or their playing habits. Um, half of them don't share files with their clan, which is interesting because a lot of them would want to if they could do so easily. The type of files they share are not surprising, mostly images and videos. And um, this will probably not surprise you. Your players don't think your chat is good, right? Most of them, three quarters of them, don't think your chat is good. Um, and they would probably install a, mess a dedicated messaging app. Now, a dedicated messaging app could be WhatsApp or Line or Clan Play, right? Um, and now, as a fun example, I was setting up an imaginary clan system for Gardenscape. Uh, you all know Gardenscape, I, or hopefully some of you know them. Uh, very good game from Playrix. Match 3 game, city builder, you engage with um, classical puzzle match 3 games, and as you complete levels, you gain stars, which you can use to unlock missions and progress the storyline. Um, when you do, you get to design your garden, Lots of nice um, uh, animations around setting up those uh, items, vanity items in your garden. Um, the match three mechanics are fairly familiar. They innovated around boosters, made them simple, simpler, um, and added some fine uh, engagement mechanics around luck. Um, the friendship system in the game is very, very, very basic. You can only share lives back and forth. So this does not give you a strong incentive to invite friends to the game. It's relatively simple, too simple in my mind. Um, and some of your uh, upgrades take time to complete, which you can pay to speed up. Now, to add a clan system to this game, first of all, you need chat. So you need to add a chat so players can communicate, right? Um, you can create a homeowner's union where you are part of a group with your neighbors. And neighbors could help one another shorten the development, the upgrade times, uh, which is, which is a nice mechanic. I took this one from Game of War. Um, it never fulfills your entire bar. So if something takes three hours, your neighbors can only help you with an hour and a half. But you really feel like they engage with your game. They're helping you in your effort. So it, feel, it gives a strong sense of, uh, uh, of being part of a group. And you want to, um, um, use the clan system to take away currency from the economy, and so players can donate to their, uh, to their clan, to their union, and when they do so, the leader would use this, these donations to unlock time-limited missions. Let's say that these missions will be one day, 24 hours long, which is why they unlock it at a time where you know, they can coordinate everyone to go together online. Um, and in those time-limited events, um, you would require them to collect multiple items, five different items, a thousand of each, right? An amount that is unobtainable by a single player. They gotta work together. You'll collect those flowers, I'll go get the gnomes, he will focus on the third type. Um, and this being such a vanity item-based game, you can really play around with uh, unique items that are only obtainable by participating in your union missions and have this funky uh, you know, fountain of four colors in your garden to show off to everyone after you've won an event, a mission. Right, so, uh, so this was the first talk on Guide to Clans. I hope you liked it. Uh, I'm here for any questions, and by the way, if you want to engage in just a friendly conversation around your clan systems, I love other people's clan systems, so feel free. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, actually, I really like the survey. Is that is that survey that you've got that you're showing off there publicly available? Well, it wasn't in a game. We just uh, we approached players that were engaged in Facebook groups of Summoners War, Clash of Kings, Game of War, Vikings by Plarium, and so on. And we asked them to participate in this uh, to answer. It was um, 35 questions, and they were so engaged. I think. Um, 90% of them ended up leaving their email account so we can you know, contact them later on. So they, they, these are really engaged players. So how do we get hold of a copy of that? Or do we have to just ask you nicely? We're slowly re releasing it this okay, year. Cool. So um, <laughs> uh, any questions, guys? I, I, I will ask them if you don't, so you have to watch out for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, will, I, mean, I, think, I think the thing that strikes me about this whole process is you seem to be saying that keeping the player feeling like that clan moment 
actually contributes to their gameplay is, right. is an essential part of it. Um, so that, that sounds to me like it requires quite a lot of deep level of thinking. Um, does it? Or is it something that comes naturally out of the fact that you have people and they're able to collaborate? Well, Oscar, to your point, I think that once you adhere to these five pillars of clanship, it's very... It's kind of straightforward to set up a system that would, on one hand, engage your players, on the other hand, feel enriching to their experience and um, coherent to your you know, entire game. Um, so I think clans could be added to really almost any game. Maybe not super casual, although I'm trying to figure out a way to do so as well. I, I have a hunch it, it's possible, uh, but really, any game that has players engaging with it over time, over a long time, makes sense for them to be part of a social group, right? This is, clans are the new social layers for games today. Absolutely. Uh, anyone else? With a no, with a no competitive game, do you think the, um, put an objective or a goal for the clan to compete for a ranking or something like that? It's an oath stimulant for the members of the clan, or uh, they focus on another aspects. Well, if you have leaderboards, you don't need to um, task players into um, participating in them. There's a natural gamification happening just around visualization of your ranking. People naturally want to progress and 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 get higher ranked and. What you can do if you want to gamify it further is notify the clan when they advance in level significantly or lose level significantly. So your clan was ranked 4,350 and now you're 4,200. 4, Congratulations, right? That gets people engaged with the leaderboard again. Yeah, but it's a very basic gamification uh, leaderboard. It's uh, maybe you need uh, another aspect. And if the game is not a competitive game, Maybe it's not the right way, it's a question. Uh, okay, so you're asking whether to actually add the leaderboard at all. Um, some games are just story driven, right? And then there's no competition. Uh, if there's no clear metric which you can benchmark against, uh, and you do want to still add a leaderboard, you, you don't have to, but if you do want to add a leaderboard, um, you can do so, for example, by clan level. So you can add clan points, and this could be, um, like from the previous talk, uh, just based on your participation in the game. Just give players points for performing the various actions in the game, and then these points accumulating towards the, the clan's uh, uh, actual you know, bottom line rank. I'd like to add a little bit to that, from, uh, again, from my personal experiences. Uh, I think there is a question about leaderboards in general, but because there's a small percentage of people who are, who are motivated for the, I'm 4,397th, okay, now I'm 4,396th, you know, because yeah. uh, there's only a certain percentage of people who, who care about that. But making that relevant, so making it kind of focused on the, uh, within the clan or focused within uh, a, a no, uh, identifiable social group is still valuable. So even if it's like, how pretty is my farm, mm -hmm. it, that matters uh, when I'm amongst friends, but it doesn't necessarily matter on a global leaderboard. If that, but would you say that's uh, your experience too? Uh, it, that's true, that's true. So not everyone will engage with, you know, your game mechanics. There are different types of player behavior, you know, archetypes, collectors, achievers, and so on. Uh, and not everyone cares about leaderboards. Some players are not competitive at all. But these players, or some of them, still like to collaborate and feel they're proud of a group. So you can, incent you can engage them in various other ways uh, by participating in a clan. Well, I should highlight that um, there are some psychologists looking at the Bartle player types and questioning whether they actually exist. Um, but that's another subject for another time. And on that note, I'm going to thank Leo very much. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks.